Africa's largest telco operator, MTN Group, had a great outing across its Pan-African footprint in 2021 with initial offerings in Nigeria and Uganda, while its shares rallied on the Ghana Stock Exchange. At the home front in South Africa, MTN Group shares climbed nearly 145% last year on the GSE, one of the strongest in the industry. Starting off the new year, 2022, with a 5G Spectrum license in its back pocket in Nigeria, as well as an approval in principle for a payment service bank, the MTN Group CEO, Raf Mupita, is currently in Nigeria as part of keeping his eyes on his egg nest. Okay, so MTN Group is here joining me live now in the studio, along with his host CEO, the Chief Executive of MTN Nigeria, Carl Turia. Gentlemen, good to see you for the first time since your IPO last December. Thank you. Hey, good. Let's talk about football. You want to talk about <laughs> football? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how's it played out at AFCON? What's your take? No, my, um, my predictions were going to be Nigeria and Cameroon, so I'm a hopeless punter. So, uh, but uh, we're very proud of being, uh, supporting the Super Eagles as the MTN group. And uh, yeah, we understand that you know, sometimes things go your way, don't go your way, but you know, you've got Qatar coming up. Uh -oh. So um, you know, putting uh, you know, our focus there now. Oh, really? Yeah, we are. We are. I know. Okay, <laughs> let's do business. Let's talk about your. Give me a bit of. Uh, let me start. Let's put it. Give me a bit of a helicopter view mm -hmm. of uh, MTN Group's key milestones, which were achieved in 2021. No, 2021 was a very important year for us. Uh, we set a new strategy. Uh, we talk about it, uh, you know, to our investors and stakeholders. Ambition 2025. We put a roadmap over the next five years, really about how we want to transform the business. Uh, we're seeing a massive acceleration for the demand for digital services. We're seeing also a significant demand uh, for driving financial inclusion. And those are the two centerpieces of where the business is anchored. And uh, you know, COVID has had a lot of challenges for us for sure, but it's created also you know, tremendous opportunities for a business such as ours that is in the digital space. So we've seen, as you mentioned earlier on, that um, uh, strong data demand, very strong data demand. The Nigerian numbers will come out tomorrow and you'll be able to see them for yourselves. But all around uh, is that the business has been investing in its networks and uh, attracting you know, good customers, giving good customers good uh, experience across all our markets. And uh, Nigeria in particular has done exceptionally well. Um, you know, Carl can talk to it himself, but uh, as you mentioned, we saw progress in how the company is operating. You saw our results in quarter three. We can't talk about the full year results until tomorrow, but also with the milestones of being able to um, I get the PSP uh, AIP, so it's still approval in principle. Um, that's been, and then the 5G license, which sets us, you know, for another decade plus of uh, uh, growth, um, you know, now that we have the 5G spectrum. So it was a tremendous year. Oh, uh, Carl, we should be having this conversation tomorrow, but here we are today. You know tomorrow, you know what's in the earnings. Tell me. Absolutely. I think quarter three was an indication of the strong operational trajectory that we've had. Yes. Um, tomorrow, we'll come up with the results. We can't speak about them now, but I'm happy to come back again and talk to the results um, <laughs> on Monday or Tuesday. Um, but quarter three was a good indication, as Ralph has indicated, um, very strong data growth on a sustained basis. We continue our investment um, into those opportunities, and we're extremely proud to have secured um, the 5G spectrum, continuing our leadership on the technology front, and bringing the world-class technology to the whole of Nigeria, um, hopefully soon. I'm sure you have fully rested from the roadshows and all that that went into the IPO. Uh, so, uh, localize some of your initiatives for me, starting with the IPO last, last month. So just to correct a slight nuance there, it's, it was a public offer. We were listed already um, through, through the transaction which we did in May, uh, the prior year. Um, so we were selling down 575 million shares with an opportunity for a green shoe with a specific retail a focus on retail investors and being the first digital transaction. Um, there was, of course, a paper element, but the first digital transaction. So that is in the process of approval with the regulatory authorities, the Securities and Exchange Commission. We can't speak to it until they have given uh, their views, approvals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we were pleased with how the roadshows went. Um, and we'll also come out with that news and come back to speak to you about it once again then. Key focus, I mean, we, we did price that appropriately in terms of opening the opportunities for the retail customers and really giving the 5% discount if you hold the shares for, for a year, really to create a view of long-term investment in Nigeria and to deepen 
local retail shareholder holding in this institution. Uh, interesting that you also have uh, uh, a payment service uh, banking uh, in initial provincial approval in, in your back pocket. So uh, give me the timelines and how, when you intend to roll out, uh, how do you intend to operate, what's your action line on, on that? Uh, because I believe perhaps uh, you're already sitting on trillions of naira already and you have a payment service bank, which means you're starting out with a capitalization that I'm not sure any other bank in Nigeria ever had. So um, to make it absolutely clear, I said exactly the same thing to Ruben and Adesua. <laughs> what we have is an approval in principle. Yes. The timelines under which we get the final approval are 100% in the hands of the Central Bank of Nigeria. We are working, as I said previously, very constructively to see that process through but it's at their discretion. Of course, we're always, always optimistic and hopeful, and we think that if we do get, and when we do get um, the final approval, we will work to launch in a short period of time and really try to bring as many of the unbanked, particularly in rural areas, into the financial ecosystem. What is actually interesting is that actually strengthens the traditional banking system. In, financial, in terms of financial inclusion? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, uh, touch on uh, a bit, uh, 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 Raf, on, on the uh, 5G spectrum license. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. watching that very closely when the, that was won by, by Nigeria by NCC last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm sure MTN as a group has its eyes on, on 5G technology space, uh, globally speaking, and across the African space. Uh, so you've got the license in, in, in Nigeria. You're still working on it in South Africa. Tell mm -hmm. me more about that. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been often saying that... Um, the shift from 4G to 5G probably is as revolutionary from 2G to 3G. I mean, I think if we go back to the days where 2G was just a voice, and 3G gave us data, and you know we've got used to data now. But I think it's only a few years ago that uh, we were actually just, uh, uh, it was actually um, pretty much just voice. I mean, 5G brings us in a whole new world of opportunities because of the low latency type applications that uh, will now be able to be um, uh, you know, captured by, you know, businesses such as ourselves. So we're arranging ourselves across our markets to be able to lead in technology uh, evolution. So the 4G to 5G is a massive technology evolution. I mean, globally, you're hearing people talk about Web 3.0, the metaverse, and all of these things that uh, sound like they're coming from fiction. 5G enables quite a lot of that, um, and the use cases around uh, that are coming. And I think what it actually is exciting for us is the industrial applications that come with 5G, private networks, the ability for uh, you know, companies to actually use you know, high tech in how they run their own businesses. Uh, there are lots of businesses that are going to be you know, catapulted into growth because of 5G. So we're arranging ourselves to be able to secure the frequencies across markets. You, know, you mentioned Nigeria. Um, there's a multi-band auction in South Africa that we'll participate in. And other markets will come, and I'm sure you know, Ghana will be uh, around the corner. And so over the next couple of years, we will arrange ourselves to have the 5G frequencies, and then we'll build out the ecosystem, because the 5G ecosystem, in terms of devices, also still needs to be built out. But we are arranging ourselves to be ready to be able to deliver services to our customers. A very exciting opportunity that's uh, just around the corner. T touch on that very quickly for me, uh, uh, Carl, before we go uh, and break in terms of the 5G, how you've been moving on since the auction ended. Well, first of all, I mean, massive congratulations to the regulator and the ministry for conducting a transparent and fair process. Um, we were extremely impressed with that, how that went. Um, now, there's various stages, and we are working on completion of the next stage, which is the payment for the license and the formal issuance of the license. And as is usual with MTN, we hope to strive to be the first to roll out 5G on quite a significant scale, not nationwide, but quite a significant scale across uh, the country. As Ralph said, every significant evolution of technology offers a tremendous opportunity for accelerated trajectory for productivity. Um, the mining industry, the logistics and movement industry, the medical industry, um, and that's pretty much the industrial internet. Then there's the immersive internet, experiential internet for consumers, so virtual reality, high-definition gaming. Board meetings, which you do with Zoom, can actually be transformed where you can see the entire individual absorb the entire body language and share information at an unprecedented pace. So MTN, we're very proud to be at the forefront of every technological change. It started with the aggressive rollout of 2G, 
first to launch 3G, roll out a fiber network, et cetera, et cetera. And we intend to continue that and be at the forefront of bringing world-class technology to Nigerians. Gentlemen, let's take a break. Rav, Carl, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with you. You're watching the Global Business Report here on Arise News. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, this is your Global Business Report here on Arise News. Rob uh, Mufita, the Group CEO of MTN Group from South Africa, alongside with the CEO here in Nigeria, MTN Nigeria, Kalturela. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Let me ask you, um, a, 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 a Ralph, about your outlook for 2022 for the group. It's a new year. We're hitting the ground running. The shadows of uh, the pandemic is beginning to fade away a little bit, like push to a corner a little bit. Here is the U.S. coming up, the U.S. Fed talking strongly about inflation, interest rates, and what have you, with wider implications for every one of us on the planet. So how does that, how would that impact your business as the group? Look, as you say, 2022 has uh, potentially a lot of unknowns and uncertainties, but also a lot of opportunities. I mean, the unknown and uncertainties are really around uh, COVID. Are we now moving from a pandemic to endemic? I mean, as I travel across our markets, certainly on the African continent, there's a sense that, you know, we just have to find a way to live with this virus. We can't uh, have lockdowns anymore. So I think lockdowns will be an issue of the past. And, you know, people are getting uh, vaccines and uh, booster shots, et cetera, and just carrying on with life uh, because the economic and social consequences of lockdowns are just too tremendous for us. And the states that we operate in just don't have the fiscal capacity to be able to provide people, uh, you know, with financial support while they're not working. So I think the African continent will, will certainly be getting back to work. I mean, U.S. interest rates, you know, have an impact, uh, you know, more broadly across our markets. So, you know, inflation, you know, what happens to currencies, it's something that we need to, you know, continuously assess. But the thing that we think is very structural is that uh, data demand um, has structurally risen and it will not pay back because, uh, you know, COVID has come down. Um, you know, people use the Internet. They're not going to stop using the Internet just because they are, they are, they are now, um, you know, going to, uh, you know, go back to the office. So we see opportunities in the home. So we're arranging ourselves to be not just, um, you know, providing, you know, solutions and services, uh, you know, for mobile, but, you know, the fixed area is an area that we also want to be, uh, uh, you know, participating in. And we'll mix the technologies you know, to be able to deliver the experience. So we see an acceleration of demand for digital services, and Nigeria certainly will be part of that. So we're arranging ourselves for that. I think people have gotten used to e-commerce now um, and, and the ability to just order and not uh, order online, the online, offline world. And we're arranging ourselves to be able to, you know, to participate. I think we're going to see also a structurally, um, you know, uh, a shift in terms of how people think about asset ownership of uh, digital infrastructure. And we are certainly going to see a move more to open access and want to participate so those are some of the opportunities that we see. And for our industry, uh, digital infrastructure, I think it's being seen more as a systemically important. Um, I came from the financial services, and we always were told the financial services is a systemically important. The economy can't work without it. But what we've seen now with COVID is actually the underpin of a systemically important industry is the digital infrastructure which we provide. So we are well positioned to be able to keep societies operating and actually prospering uh, you know, from an MTN perspective. So we, we, we are excited about 2022. In terms of your operations in Nigeria, Kyle, in terms of how you've used the financial markets to very good advantage in terms of whether you're doing a bond or you're doing a CP and all of that, what do you think central bank interest rate direction for 2022 would mean for your ambitions and your plans to do, if needed, further capital raising in the market in Nigeria this year? In terms of either exchange rate or outlook, interest rate, well, how much you're paying on, on, on your borrowings? So look, the signal from the central bank has been to keep uh, interest rates at this point in time steady. And we're in a unique opportunity to offer a very safe, um, stable instrument to the markets, to the capital markets. And we've taken advantage of that in our bond raising, which we will probably explore a further continuation of that um, in the medium term. Um, the foreign exchange rates have been relatively stable. Um, we've been supported um, across the board by the central bank, recognizing the points which Ralph made around the importance of the digital underpin of the economy. Um, so we are very, very appreciative of the help from the central bank to allow us to continue to meet our obligations and expand our network. And I think it's going to be 
more and more critical going forward. We will take advantage of um, the interest rate regime that we experience now and having a long-term stable finance cost um, and um, securing adequate debt to address our infrastructure needs around 4G and 5G expansion. Um, and you hear more from us and from the capital markets on that soon. I just wanted to know how soon you'll be get coming back to the market for the program. At a program, CPO a bond. Program for bonds is probably within this calendar year, um, but there are certain processes which we have to go through, including regulatory processes, before we can speak any further to that. What's the size? Also, we have to wait for the regulators <laughs> to give their go ahead before we proceed. Ralph, you've done as a group a, a bit of your footprints are uh, lagging up all over the continent uh, with the Ugandans listing. You, you pop up in West Africa, in, in Ghana as well. And I'm beginning to ask, you, with Uganda as well, it's also mm -hmm. listed there on the, on the RSE. So I'm beginning, Kigali, so I'm beginning to ask, where will the yellow pop up again on, on the trading floor of any exchange? No, I mean, it's, it's all focused around our concept of shared value. So we as MTN cannot, uh, you know, succeed in markets unless, you know, we've got a broad, uh, you know, participation of retail and institutional investors. And we also believe that, um, you know, the economies we operate in need to develop equity and debt capital markets. On the equity capital markets, if we believe that that is true, then we must be willing to subject ourselves to putting our businesses with their sizable exchanges on the exchange and creating sufficient free float that trading happens and value uh, discovery or price discovery comes through. So Nigeria, we did our, our listing by introduction. We've done the public offer, series one. We think there are at least uh, uh, two more series to go uh, because we have a plan to uh, sell down and broaden the local participation by selling down about 14%. The series which we will be concluded in time and when, when we can uh, have the regulatory approvals is the first of a series of sell down to broaden uh, uh, local ownership. So we've done Ghana, uh, we've done Uganda, we've done Rwanda. Um, so wherever there is an, the equity capital markets can take our stock, we will, we will localize. You still interested in Ethiopia? We had a hard look at Ethiopia, um, and um, you know, we were guided by our capital allocation processes that uh, about how much capital we could deploy. Uh, we weren't successful, but sometimes you, know, you can't succeed everywhere. I mean, the continent has got so much opportunity, um, so we will continue to look for the opportunities that allow us to be able to take our services and uh, deliver them in the way we deliver them here in, in, in Nigeria. So, you know, um, you know, footprint expansion on the continent is important. We are exiting the Middle East and wanting to focus our strategy on being a truly pan-African business. So we will look at opportunities as and when they arise across the African continent. Mm. Interesting. Carl, you're doing a lot in Nigeria, the, the support. Tell me about the support you're getting from the stakeholders. And you mentioned support from the central bank. I'm sure you, you're in the hands of so many regulators. Sometimes I wonder how you manage it, uh, and the economy in general. At the same time you're spending money, you're also building a new headquarters. So I think you're spending a whole lot of money. Well, I think as Ralph said, uh, one of the pillars of our ambition 2025 is sustainability. And sustainability at the core for us means shared value. Um, so it's critical that it's understood that MTN is about building shared value in the society that we live in. One part of that is uh, the public offer, um, which we're waiting for the closure on, and we really want as many retail part, uh, people to participate in that as, as possible. But the continuation of the shared public value is the sponsorship of the Nigerian Football Federation um, on a long-term basis to really support the sports that's most important to Nigeria. And yes, we've had a stumble at AFCON, but I'm sure we're going to come back twice as strong. You're heartbroken. At all. I'm absolutely heartbroken. I watched <laughs> the too. match. Me too. Um, still not gotten over it. Um, we did announce that we have committed to an iconoclastic state of the arts head office in Lagos. And we're discussing that at the board and we'll be making progress on that shortly. The road infrastructure tax credit scheme where we are participating in the refurbishment of the dual carriageway and Nugonich Expressway is also progressing. We'll be engaging the Ministry of Finance to unlock some of the steps for us to actually start work in that space. Um, so, yes, um, we do have a lot of regulators. We do have a lot of investment in the society, but it is something that we're happy to do. And we think the relationship with the key stakeholders has come such a long way in the last year or so, and we only have uh, uh, upwards to go. But um, relationships are like riding a bicycle up the hill. The minute you stop investing and cycling, you start to slide backwards. And then we'll be investing and, and engaging till the end of time. 
I want to make a comment on the stakeholder point, if you may. I, mean, yes. I, I just want to take the opportunity yes, Ralph. to uh, thank our stakeholders. As you say, there's a lot of them, whether they're in Abuja or Lagos, who've made, uh, you spoke about 2021 being a successful year. It is impossible for it to have been successful without the support of the regulators, the NCC, the Central Bank, uh, and the Minister of, of Communications. There's a whole, um, you know, a range of stakeholders because we, we don't, you know, operate um, in a vacuum. We're operating within a, with the context of a broader society, and the stakeholders have been tremendously supportive. And I just wanted to express my thanks and gratitude to all of them uh, in supporting uh, Carl and through their support, obviously supporting us. And we'll keep peddling up the hill, as Carl says. You know, I haven't really asked you why you're in Nigeria. Nigeria's home. I mean, Africa's <laughs> home. So, you know, it's like asking me why you're at home, you know. It's, my kids ask me sometimes, like, Daddy, what are you doing at home? You're meant to be working. So I'm at home. Oh, really? Lagos is home. How? Um, give me an idea of what the dividend will look like for last year. Not a chance that I will give you that oh, until we no. officially Carl. release our results. But you only have to wait 24 hours, and then you'll know. Yeah, We're would. probably going to be the first of the large listed companies to announce our results mm. um, within, within a month of the financial year closure, Legend. another first for, for MTN. Um, so 24 hours and you have all yeah, the because, information. Yeah, because, you know, you the, the last uh, public uh, offer was going to come with a dividend. So I'm sure a lot of retail investors are watching RSDs and say, hey, Carl, give, it's end, end of the month, by the way. Carl, give me something. Today's 27th. They'll know tomorrow. <laughs> they will know tomorrow. <laughs> and we will be in breach of all the regulations uh, announcing it a second before. Okay, okay. We will we'll wait here. Let's be the first to know here on RSD News, by the way. Uh, when that comes out uh, from the regulators. Thank you uh, uh, for both for, for coming here. You've been a good host to, to Ralph. And you're home here. Uh, 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 but, but, but by the way, the MTN Foundation, which uh, uh, just goes into my, I was getting carried away with the dividend thing about because of the bad bottom line. But when you talk about MTN Foundation, uh, how much further would you be investing when you look at the various issues in Nigeria? And would you be adding more to what you're already doing, not just in terms of uh, amount of what you're investing, but in terms of um, if you're looking at other parts of the economy that you think is critical that you need to support? So the, the guiding principles around the foundation are very clear. We invest, <clears throat> excuse me, 1% of profit after tax, and that will continue. Our responsibility is to continue to grow our profit after tax so we can continue to invest more and more in the foundation. What we're trying to do is focus um, our spending so that we have maximum in impact on a few key themes across the country. And we're known to own those areas of social uh, investment. Um, we have an independent, independent foundation with an independent board, and they will make the judgment calls of how and where we invest those sums. But we are fully committed. We continue to invest 1% of profit after tax. That will grow as the business grows, and we'll ensure that it has focus Okay, but my final question will go to Ralph. Uh, thank you for coming through in terms of this other. How are you folks uh, uh, coping with the uh, Omicron variant and, and all of that? How are you surviving down there? Yeah, I, I caught, uh, I caught uh, COVID in December, and I'm sure it was the Omicron variant. Uh, it was a bit of a scratchy throat, but a few days later I was fine. I think the thing we're seeing is that um, for sure it's got high transmissibility. That's super clear. Um, but um, actually uh, the effects are relative to Delta, probably more uh, modest, and hospitalization levels are uh, much lower. Uh, the government is considering removing, uh, you know, the regulations, um, disaster regulations, so basically saying go back to the new normal. So that's a sign that, uh, you know, ideally if this, there are no more variants that are um, not only just more transmissible, but uh, end up with higher hospitalization and case fatality rates, we are moving from pandemic to endemic. So you go into Johannesburg and all around, uh, you know, traffic mobility, you know, there's traffic congestion now. So that's a sign that the economy is trying to get back to normal. So, yeah, things are looking up, uh, you know, cautiously looking up. Uh, and, uh, you know, that may be the trend that uh, gets us all back to growth. Good, good news, good news for, for everyone down there. And, and I had to mind with everyone with you in, in South Africa and all that, because we just need to open up it. And, and keep moving on. So it allows you to go, come in more into Nigeria very frequently. And yeah, exactly. Leave, and, and, and Carl too can just go down there as well. Yeah. We Absolutely. need our lives back in a manner of How we do. Mm. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, put it there. Thank for you. the first meet here there in 2022. <laughs> That's Raf Mopita, the group CEO of MTN Group from South Africa, live here on Arise.
Global Business News and Kao Torele, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of MTN Nigeria PLC. Thank <laughs> you.